Hi, my name is Francis Mendoza, and I'm a naturalist with the East Bay Regional Park District. Today, we're going to look at some bird feet and how birds use their feet to do a whole variety of things from perching to roosting to hunting and searching for food. Over the years, I've collected a variety of bird feet, which is something that I can do with a collecting permit from the Fish and Wildlife Service. So even if you see a feather like this, you're not allowed to collect it unless you have a permit for either educational purposes or research purposes. Let's take a look at our first bird. This is a northern flicker, which is a big type of woodpecker that spends its time in different habitats, in oak woodlands, marshes, uh, grasslands, and even coastal scrub. You'll see it not only in trees, you'll also see them on the ground in the leaf litter looking for things to eat, like insects and grubs. Their feet are very generalized with medium-sized legs and medium-sized claws. That allows them to go from trees to the ground and onto rocks like this rock here at Coyote Hills Regional Park in Fremont. This is a spotted sandpiper and even though it's in the grassy lawn here in this picture, it usually spends its time in the water and on the mud flats. Notice the little tiny claw on the back of its foot. That's called a dew claw. And in birds, they use this to either perch on twigs and other items or walk in the mud, and we'll see that raptors and birds of prey use it for a whole other reason. This is the foot of a sandpiper. Notice the duke on the back and the three digits in front that allow it to walk in the mud without falling into the mud. They distribute their weight out evenly so that they can walk in much like you would with snowshoes in the snow. In direct contrast, you'll see that this is a foot of a red-tailed hawk. And you can see how the claws are much bigger, which allows them to catch prey like mice and lizards and snakes. You'll also see that the dew claw on the back is much bigger than the sandpipers. This allows them to grasp prey and kill them instantaneously so that they don't fight back and bite the foot of this raptor. Now notice also as I take a closer look that there are scales on the feet. And this speaks to the direct lineage that birds have with a certain group of dinosaurs called the theropods. Birds or prey or raptors like this red-tailed hawk have feet that are called talons. You can say they're very talented. Ducks like this mallard drake have web feet. This allows them to swim in the water effectively but also fly from a standing or swimming position. This is a foot of a mallard duck. Notice the webbing in between that allows it to swim in the water very effectively. Also, the dew claw is tiny and off to the side, which allows it to walk in the mud and provide another balance point to distribute its weight evenly. In direct contrast, we have a foot of an American coot. This coot is a bird that swims in the water but also takes off in the water almost like it's walking in the water. Instead of having webbed feet, you have semi-lobe feet that allow it to swim but also walk in the ground uh, effectively and in the mud. Its dew claw is a little bit longer than the mallards and provides another point to distribute its weight evenly. Here's the coot looking like it's walking or running on the water before it flies away. Notice how big its feet are, proportionate to the size of its body. Lastly, I wanted to show you a foot of a totally different animal, the black-tailed jackrabbit. And this is one of the prey items that birds of prey like the red-tailed hawk will go after. They have these big paws that allow them to run up to 25 to 30 miles an hour to evade that predator. I want to thank you for joining me in this exploration of bird feet and their adaptations. We'll see you next time. <music>